in like my cousin's garage. Like his dad had some weights and it was always like, who could lift more, right? And it was always, I've always pushed myself like that. Like I always push the weights, try to be stronger and I always wanted to be stronger. I want nothing more than, than to win. And I talk about it a lot. Like I chase the numbers just like every power lifter does, but um, I'll take winning over, over setting a new PR any day. Uh, CW2 Payne, I'm a uh, instructor pilot with Golf Company uh, 6 Battalion GSAB. Um, I fly this one, big girl. Oh, no! I grew up in the Ranger Regiment. Um, spent my first four years there, and uh, every single day in the regiment is is a uh, is a competition. You compete for your job every single day. Everybody wants to be the best, right? And uh, I've kind of carried that through my entire career. They did a uh, like a post bench competition. I benched 455, I think it was, and I was so far ahead of everyone else. I started doing a little research on like where I fell kind of within the, the, like the powerlifting community. I uh, came back from that deployment and got into the, the competitive powerlifting. It makes being strong cool. It makes being strong uh, something that matters, right? Whereas like if it wasn't for powerlifting, then being strong would just be you're just a strong guy in the gym. I've been soldiering for a while, right? Like I've been in the army for 15 years. So the soldier requirements at this point are just part of life. Um, so you just kind of make those happen, make those work, and then um, and, and make sure you prioritize training. Rory really helped stand up this new Chinook company, uh, the new Chinook company in the army. As an instructor pilot, he's helped us grow from three to 10 readiness level one air crews in less than a year. And I'm extraordinarily proud and honored to serve as his commander. What I like about Rory is that his passions outside of work are very tangible and translatable to what he does as a soldier. Uh, so if, if that means that I can help him resource and achieve his goals outside of work to become a more physically fit, resilient officer in the army, then I'm all for it in every instance. So that kind of goes into, you know, like the soldier powerlifting balance of, you know, trying to keep everything always even. Um, I, uh, I compete February 13th um, and I, uh, I board a plane uh, the 14th in the morning, Monday morning, and fly from Miami to Alexandria. Um, and that's for, for that JRTC rotation. So, um, you know, the, the command provided me the opportunity to, to still be able to compete as long as I'm able to get myself to JRTC and, and be able to be part of that rotation. So, um, you know, I'll make it work. And that's where, you, um, you know, where there's a will, there's a way. And, and in this case, you know, we, we're making it work. The difference in Rory is, than other people, is he believes he can win. It's not just words. He thinks it, he lives it, he breathes it. He speaks it into existence, if you will. Um, he truly believes in himself, and I think that's just one of the most admirable things. Getting ready for the Pro Raw, uh, the Arnold Australia, and uh, COVID shut it down. So um, that was probably the most prepared I'd ever been uh, for a meet. It was the first invite meet that I've, I've been invited to. It was the first time I was really going to step onto a platform that was competitive, truly competitive. Um, and that got, that got stopped. What I did was I found a, a buddy of mine who was uh, actually going to run a meet in Nashville. And it was, uh, I can't remember the organization, but it was, uh, it was for a children's charity. And that was supposed to be the next May, which was like a couple months later. And then that got canceled, right? So then I'm kind of in this like limbo of like, I want to compete. I'm ready to compete. But I just kind of ended up kind of just kicking the can down the road and kind of staying ready. Um, and it kind of hurt. It was very, very hard for him. Um, I can remember times where he was down. I think that he took that energy and that setback and he channeled it. There was lots of opportunity, I guess, for him to quit. And he never did. Never did. Regardless of like um, where I end up, you know, what's going on, I, I still want to train myself to to step on that stage and, and be the best, right, and, and win, right, and that, in the end, that's what it, what matters, right, for me, um, and I think that's my motivation, and, and it never really faltered. I got into the Kern and uh, had a essentially a perfect meet. Uh, I went nine for nine, um, hit some milestones that I, I'd been 
chasing for a while, 350 kilogram squat, 500 bench, 700 deadlift. Those are things that I've been chasing for a long time. And uh, I hit those and uh, turned out that it ended up uh, putting me seventh, uh, seventh in the world at 220 wrapped men um, for last year. So um, that was something I've been chasing to finish in the top 10 in my weight class. And I did that. I mean, I got seven guys or six guys on my hit list now, right? For, for 22 that those are the guys that really that I need to beat now. Like, and, uh, going into, uh, I know there'll be one for sure at, at the meet in February. Um, and then, uh, we'll see what the meet in, in July holds. If you want to be the best, you got to compete against the best. You got to beat the best, right? So that's my mentality. So, um, some of the best lifters in the world will be there. So it's, you know, that's, that's what I'm always chasing. I want, I'm always chasing competition. Um, I don't want to just go and compete against nobody or anybody. I want to compete against the best in the world. Um, if I lose and I lost le legitimately, but if you win, then you can, you can kind of, you know, put yourself into that, that next category or into that category.